Hello, it's Jimmy here at O'Reilly's and I have here another Ford Focus to look at. So this one has come down from sunny Skegness or Skeg Vegas. Okay, I'm inside the car, let's uh, start it up. So this is what the complaint is, engine malfunction, engine lights on and the power is seriously decreased. Okay, I'm going to use this diagnostic machine, it's the iSmart Link 801, I mean the model number on the back says ST08. And we're going to go with auto detect. Okay, we have a 2010 1.6 Ford Focus diesel. Okay, we just run the scan, we have oil deteriorated, an issue with the smart alternator. DPF differential pressure too low, oxygen sensor is out of range on deacceleration. Diesel particulate filter soot accumulation. Okay, let's have a look at what's going on. I'm going to click on the data stream and we're just going to find some of these items. Uh, let's have a look for the oxygen sensor. Right, that's not listed. Uh, oh. Sorry, we'll go for the differential pressure. So I'm just seeing if we have any different wordings for the oxygen sensor, which is like could be a fuel air ratio sensor, but we can't find that. Okay, so we have a pressure of 88 to 87 with the engine idling. Let's just switch it off and see what we're getting when it's off. So we've still got an 80, 80 millibars reading while the engine is off, so there's clearly an issue with that sensor. Okay, so engine up, uh, bonner up, we have this sensor over here. So I have got a couple of these in the in the van. So yeah, I do carry a lot of these types of sensors in the vehicle. So we'll get a couple of these out and we'll have a look at what's going on. Okay, checking the pins. We have five volts on both the input and the signal wires. And we have continuity on the earth. Okay, so we can see that when we disconnect this sensor, we're now dropping down to 19.9, .9, which is still way off. Just connect up a replacement sensor here. Let's see what we have. We've got a something ridiculous at the minute, but we're gonna calibrate that sensor in. Now obviously we have plugged that in with the ignition on, so we're gonna do a cycle of the ignition. See if that changes anything. Uh, you can see it's jumping around now from zero to there. These can take a few minutes to sort of adjust to themselves once they've been plugged in. So it looks like that's just about evened out now. Okay, now with the vehicle running, we have 22.9. Now I'm just connecting a pressure gauge just to check that the sensor is working. So that's confirmed, sort of 1000 on there, color matches up with what um, is on there. Now you can see that once we've got the sensor disconnected again, hoses are off, we have a reading of zero again. So it's pretty definite that the sensor wasn't working, but this new sensor now is, but we've got a pressure now of around 22 millibars in the DPF. So we're gonna clean that out. Um, I've showed you that process many times. So this is just sort of going through more of What's wrong with the DPFs and and whatever else? Uh, which we're, now we're gonna we're gonna stick some um, DPF cleaner through it. Okay, now you may have seen the process before. Compressor at 130 psi. Launch UK DPF cleaning fluid. Connect it up to the sensor, and we just blast it in. Squeeze the trigger. Okay, now we've put all of the sensor back together. I can see now we've got a reading of 6.9. Just going to hold the revs up at around 3000 rpm for around say two minutes just to see if we can get that pressure down any more than that but 6.9 is a good range so because i've done this one with the engine running we haven't had much chance to see how well the pressure drops but it has dropped already obviously before we've been able to connect a new sensor up and get the live data running we are at 41 pressure at 3000 rpm 
we'll let that idle down and see if it's come down any less. And we're still sort of around 6.9, 7.9. But yeah, that's an acceptable range. I'm going to do some special functions on the DPF now. As long as they're available, which is reset the particle filter values. We can also relearn the pressure sensor. It, it seems to be reading fine, so sometimes it's best to just leave them alone, but just for the sake of it, we'll do it. Okay, now that's done as well. You see, sometimes when you... I've seen when I've calibrated some of these sensors and it's actually made them slightly worse, but after sort of 20 minutes or so, the sensor will sort of come back to itself. So now we're going to... Well, we'll read these fault codes one more time. I'm going to do a smoke test to see that we haven't got any leaks regarding regarding the oxygen sensor out of range. Um, so yeah, we'll uh, we'll do that one. The smart alternator. I'm going to ignore for now. That's just because I'm. He's come down to me for a DPF issue. I haven't even heard about these other ones. We're just going to clear those. We'll test drive the car. We'll do a smoke test just to make sure we haven't got any air leaks regarding the O2 sensor. Okay, so the fault code for the block DPF is not clearing and the reset hasn't worked. So I'm using a different tool just to see if this makes a difference. This is why it's always good to have a few different brands of tools because one will always work better on certain cars. Okay, now we've reset the DPF on the auto fix. We're going to try and do a code clear again. This is a it's a great backup tool, this Autofix D1. The only thing I would say, like you could probably see it in Auto Stair, is it's a bit slow, but it is a basic model. So uh, let's try a uh, code clear now. Let's see if these will clear. Obviously, the oil deterioration, we're going to sort out what an oil change now. Yeah, so just reading the codes and sort of getting through the the system on the autofix as you can probably see here it's a little bit slow but yeah it's it's worked which is the main thing so it is a great backup tool uh, this is the autofix d1 now we're just going to reset the oil using the brake and accelerator pedal confirm that the oil has been reset okay so i have just found an issue i was about to do a smoke test and we can see that the uh, intake hose here is split Okay, so if we lift that up there, we can see where it's been split around the back here. Unfortunately, this pipe, we're not going to be able to just get hold of that anywhere uh, today. So I won't be able to include that in the repair that we're doing uh, on the video here today. So that's going to have to be done another time, unfortunately. Uh, we're going to still try and do uh, a smoke test, get it hooked up to the inlet here. Okay, so we're just running the smoke test now for a few minutes, see if we can see any other leaks anywhere else. Just because we have one leak found doesn't mean we haven't got one somewhere else. Okay, so I've just used some brake cleaner to clean up this area. We're going to try and do something temporary with that, just so we can get home. Obviously, the, he came to me that because his own mechanic couldn't diagnose or fix the DPF fault. We've got that sorted. Um, it would make more sense that once he gets back to Skegness, just have his mechanic replace that, which is a few minute job. I'm pretty sure he's capable of doing that. Okay, so what I've done is remove the Jubilee clip, we've put some duct tape across the bridge and then we've put the Jubilee clips back over the top just for a temporary seal. And of course I had to wear my cowboy hat for that one as it's not an official repair. We're just draining the oil now, or sucking it out and don't want to hear any complaints saying that that's not as good as draining it because it is, I've proved it in a video before. So we're just doing a little test drive. Then we can recheck for codes and make sure that everything seems okay. So that's it, we're all finished on that and see you on the next video.